<laughs> Let's do it. So, guys, welcome back. We're going to talk about a really, really wonderful winemaker from one of my favorite regions in all of Hungary. We have 22 wine regions, and the region of Shomlo is actually the smallest one. Yep. I think it has some of the mightiest white wines. Yeah, I think it's actually the country. Absolutely, it's it's a tiny region, uh, less than uh, 500 hectares of vineyards, and uh, typically very small producers. So the average size there uh, is probably less than a, a hectare of uh, per 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 winery. Mostly a white wine region, and uh, producing extremely unique wine because of the of the soil, the volcanic basalt soil. When you go there. It's it's a hill that you can see from miles and miles, kilometers and kilometers away. It's a very steep hill and goes up to uh, 450 meters or so. So it's fairly high for Hungary. Very steep sides, um, flat top. It's obviously an extinct volcanic hill. Mm -hmm. I always tell guests when they come in and we taste wines from Shomlo, there's, there's two things to know about it. Number one, if you're going to taste wines there, you always need to start at the top walk mm -hmm. to the top and you taste your way down mm -hmm. because if you start drinking at the bottom of the hill that elevation will uh catch up to you later mm -hmm. so you oh, should yeah. always start at the top and taste your way down and number two i always describe it like if you come from a country that has mountains actual mountains then this is a hill if oh, you yeah. come from a very flat country then this is more it feels more like a mountain for us it's a mountain right exactly Shonglo hey. Right, so the Hungarian language <laughs> only has one, kind of one word, but for, for hill and mountain, all yeah. inclusive, and so we have to, uh, yeah. yeah. It is an extinct volcano. Uh, basalt is uh, solidified lava, so millions of years ago this uh, hill was throwing out flowing uh, uh, stones and melted, uh, melted rocks, and of course this solidified, and this is what uh, sort of composes this, this hill. The main variety is there, or Furmint, Hachlevelu, Olas Riesling, and Ufark, four uh, white grapes. And specifically Ufark is, is, if I'm not mistaken, that's considered to be the flagship grape of the region. Mm -hmm. So that's the one that's very specific to that region. And I'm not going to say you won't ever find it anywhere else, but it's pretty rare to find Ufark outside of the hills of Shomlo. When you taste the wine from Shomlo, you know that it's Shomlo. It has this very fiery, very intense, very yeah, muscular minerality. Well, you know, say. talking about wine without tasting it is, you know, like torture. Watching. It's like torture. These wines come from Peter Pot. Yeah. Uh, what do you know about this guy? Yes, of course, he's operating under the label of Kufeitu Winery, which is a word in Hungarian language that means uh, quarry. Quarry, which is, I think, really relevant when we talk about minerals and the Shomo soil and the Shomo region. So, we had a chance to actually meet him with the team, I think last November, was it? Absolutely. Yeah. And that was a wonderful tasting. So just a little bit about him personally, he's, he's a relatively younger winemaker. You see some winemakers on the Shomlo Hills that are, well, they're well into retirement, some in their, you know, in their 70s, even a couple in their early 80s who are still somewhat involved in the, in the winemaking. So there's always this kind of rustic and traditional aspect to the region. But yeah, he's a young guy, family man, has uh, three daughters, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, and he also has loads of experience, so it's not like he just showed up overnight. But it's just amazing to see somebody of his age doing this quality of work. Yeah. And so he, had, he has relatively small production. Um, many bottles are in the, you know, in the hundreds of bottles. If more, it's going to be like a thousand, maximum two thousand of a given style. So he's very, very involved in the vineyard as well. He, he harvests approximately four hectares of grapes annually, depending on the yield. Fully organic. Fully organic. That's definitely important. And he's, he has a hand in all of it. He's not a natural winemaker, but he's very respectful of, of nature uh, by being organic, obviously. And he's also very respectful of the, the grapes and the juice that comes in the cellar. Uh, everything is spontaneously fermented, no enzymes, no additives. Uh, he uses uh, a tiny bit of sulfur occasionally, not all of his wines, and a little bit of bentonite, clay, clay uh, like uh, material for the clarification. That's it. Everything is fermented in barrels. Ooh, cheers. cheers. Happy Tuesday morning. Peter suggested that we taste these wines from these larger glasses. Uh, Shomlo has a lot of nuances, a lot of aroma that. Um, that uh, will show when the wine actually warms up. In a sense, it's not going to be floral, it's not going to be uh, 
let's say spicy in most cases, it's going to have a shomlo smell. And for me, this is this very mineral, very flinty, almost like when you yeah. would like, you know, strike two rocks together to start some sparks to make fire, this kind of minerality. It just has this, this rusted element to mm -hmm. it. It's like this ancient, like ancient, ancient like you trouble. can really imagine this is how people were drinking wine, you know, yeah. in Hungary 300, 400 years ago. And, and that's, therein lies the tradition, therein lies the beauty, and therein lies a big reason why I love these wines. There, there is a, a vineyard, a uh, hillside in, in, in Shomlo called Ku Konya, which actually actually tells it all, I think. Right. Stone kitchen. <laughs> I mean, this is, the, this is what you cook in a stone kitchen, and that's how the wines taste. Absolutely. So, starting off with the flagship grape of the entire region, we're starting with Ufar. And before we talk about how the wine tastes and, and you know what we smell, what we feel from it, it's important to know kind of the legend behind it. So Ufark, yep. the name literally translates as sheep's tail. And that's, uh, for me, one of the least creative names in all of Hungarian wine, because at one point in time, somebody saw these, these grapes in the vineyard and they saw that the tendrils of the vines were curling up like, the, like a, a sheep's tail. They said, oh, let's call it sheep's tail. <laughs> so yeah, you is sheep, fork is tail, you fork, sheep's tail. But Nowadays, we really look at the folk legend behind it, which is the wedding night wine. Yeah. So this, simply put, the way that this little legend goes is that if a bride and a groom drink Ufark on their wedding night, then their first child is going to be a boy. So what, what did Peter do wrong? I don't, maybe he's not drinking his own wines on his wedding <laughs> night. Uh, Honestly, I would love to, to see like a study or a statistic, though I do have a couple of, of guy friends who are actually who actually said <clears throat> that their parents drank Ufark on their mm -hmm. wedding night. Actually, Endra, one of our, our guides here at Taste Hungry, is a, is a Ufark uh, baby. I didn't know that. So, so Ufark, the grape itself, is not an aromatic grape. It does not have much of a personality when it comes to, to the nose. And that's why it's actually perfect for Shonglo, because it lets the, the heel speak for itself through through the glass and like you described it, it is whetstone flintiness a little bit of gooseberry um rhubarb this is this is what i get uh sort of funky flavors and ex volcanic and mineralic to the extreme i also get from this one like a little bit of this like almost a touch of like, like I'm, it sounds very specific but like underripe banana and a little bit of like mm -hmm. sour plum so it just makes for a very nice combination great acid structure as well. That's going to be a wine that I think shines best next to the right food. This is vintage 2021. It's young, it's three years old. For Shomlo, Shomlo people have to be patient in the vineyard, in the cellar, and also in the aging, bottle aging. It's going to develop for a, long more, a lot more time. Absolutely. Um, I'm just going to zoom it in here a bit. Look at that. Just liquid gold, almost. If I, if I didn't know any better, I would think that we're looking at a Tokai dessert wine. I know, but we're not. And so we're jumping in. This is kind of a four for one. This is the, the Chomloi Cuvée, mm -hmm. or the, the Chomlo White Blend coming from Cuvée to winery. Wow. Mm -hmm. I mean, what I love about this, four different grapes. We have Olas Riesling, Four Meat, Pache Lavelu, and of course, Ufark. Mm -hmm. It wouldn't be a Chomlo Blend without Ufark, but I'm getting the best of everything. I get a little bit of this nuttiness from the Olas Riesling. Mm -hmm. I get much fuller body and much more, just much more structure from the Harsh mm -hmm. Nice cutting acid from the Formine and that classic funk and fruit and minerality and everything coming from Ufark and from the soil. Yeah, the and only thing I can add is the, the tannins from the Formine. Yes, the yes, ab nice. absolutely. And, and you know, when we talk about having a blend with all these different white grape varieties from a region like Shomlo, Definitely, these grapes got plenty of sun, so everything is nice and ripe, the flavors are very present. And so what he did was all of these uh, varieties were fermented in, and aged in oak barrels for a total of 10 months. After that 10 month period, when the aging and the fermentation was complete, is when he blended them in, so that all of this was done with separate varieties in their separate barrels, finally being blended for bottling. This wine, this blend is Shomlo in a bottle, perfect. Yeah, vintage 2018, uh, Peter's vineyards are located on the west side of the hill, that's the warmest part of the hill. 
So acidity is slightly lower than usual in Chomlo. Judging from the waxy, like the honey-like waxiness of this um, wine, maybe there was this was harvested even with a tiny bit of botrytis, mm -hmm. which I think makes it very exciting. Red wine from uh, Chomlo, sort of a unique kind of species, right? Absolutely, and that's my thing is is we go to Chomlo and you're expecting to only drink white wines. If you do taste a red. Typically for me, at least, it's been like a, okay, it's nice and everything that it's in the portfolio, but I was never wowed until this one. I, I perfectly agree with you. And this was so good, we immediately put it in our US portfolio. Very, very uh, good wine, very uh, fruity, which is again, unique for Chomlo. Uh, this is made from 55% Syrah, 45% Cabernet Sauvignon. Uh, international varieties, a little bit out of place even in Chonlo. Uh, Peter actually made these wines in uh, French oak barrels, is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. Because he aged it in French oak and because he's using these French varietals, I was getting, when I first tasted this, I was thinking immediately of like Northern Rome mm -hmm. Syrah or Northern Rome blends, just like this cool climate Syrah kind mm -hmm. of feeling, really, really nice fruit, a little bit of this crushed mm -hmm. violet, crushed floral thing going on with a little bit of spiciness from the oak, not overwhelming, but just again, there to integrate everything, to round it out. You get a little bit of vanilla, a little bit of coffee, stuff like that, but it's not overpowering, uh, you know, the acid structure and the fruit and the natural kind of character. Amazing, plum, plum jam. Yeah raspberry really beautiful fruity fruity stuff uh, although it reminded me of uh, more like an etna red like italian volcanic reds uh, not necessarily the nose but the finish and that's fine we're not even no, no surprise there the volcanic soil region you know etna volcanic soil region chomo so it's kind of a crossover best of everything and the other thing i love about it is syrah is not a very heavily planted grape in Hungary. No. Nope. So usually when we try Hungarian Syrah, it's always, I take it with a grain of salt, like, uh, you know, here we go, mm -hmm. we'll give it a try. It doesn't usually uh, hit the mark for me, but for me, this one just nailed it. I mean, of course it's a blend, so we can't say it's 100% Syrah. And the other amazing thing about it is it's just shy of 1,000 bottles were produced here. So get it while you can. We're not getting more, we don't have more. So I think I might have to take a few of those home with me today before they're all gone, because as soon as people taste this wine, it's gonna fly off the shelf. Well, you do, because it's also amazing value. Price quality ratio, that's, that's a home run. And we're talking about a small producer. So guys, uh, thank you for watching. Uh, all of these wines are available in the US now, available in the EU. These are the new club wines that we're sending out to our US club members. So they will be released uh, next week or so. Absolutely. So. Shonlo, tiny region, but well worth exploring. If you only decide to taste wines from a handful of the regions in Hungary, don't overlook it because you're going to miss out. And that's never good. Amazing stuff. Cheers guys, enjoy.